YouTube, it's Kathy, and welcome to the Library 411 tag. So this tag was created by Jashana, who is a new friend of mine, as well as This Unicorn Reads, who is somebody I've already been watching, so I was very excited when Jashana tagged me to do this video. Obviously, it's about the library, so I am here for this content. And yes, to keep up with my wearing the shirts that are appropriate to the tag thing that I'm apparently starting, I'm wearing one of my three when in doubt go to the library shirts, because yes, I own three of them. I only wear book-related shirts to work at the library, so... I've got lots. What I loved about this original tag is it gave a lot of information about the library that if you're not an avid library user, you might not have already known. For example, it blew my roommate's mind when I told him that you can get video games from the library. So many of these questions reflect services that people might not know are available, and you should because they're all great. And since April is Library Month in the United States and it's October here in Canada, they're doing a whole month-long library love-a-thon, which obviously I'm here for. As always, all the questions will be down below, so if you want to do this tag, feel free to do so. Enough preamble, let's get into the question. Number one is Information Desk, a book you found helpful for any reason. And right off the bat, I'm going to have a very strange answer, and that answer is The Poisoner's Handbook. No, this was not useful because I've decided to poison someone, just want to say that. This is a non-fiction book about the poisons that were used in Jazz Age New York, so like the 1880s to 1920s I think it was, and I just found this really fascinating and gave context to the whole Prohibition era, and why people kept drinking, and then how people kept dying because they were still drinking. It was... It was eye-opening and enlightening, and I found it really intriguing. Number two is The Return Bin, two books that you read and immediately wanted to return. Both of these books I DNF'd. One was The Natural Way of Things, and one was Lincoln and the Bardo. With The Natural Way of Things, I kept reading it, and kept reading it, and kept reading it, and was still only like a hundred pages through it, and it felt like I'd been reading it for years, so I just... It was not for me. And then with Lincoln and the Bardo, it was something I was actually listening to, I didn't know anything about it, and even though it had like Nick Offerman and David Sedaris and other people reading for it, who all have great voices, I just couldn't get into it and returned it. Number three is the hold section, your most anticipated release that you can't wait to get your hands on. And let me just tell you, the hold section on my library account is like a part-time job in itself because I put so many holds on things. So there's actually at least 25 holds on books that aren't even out yet on my library card, but one that is coming out quite soon is Leon the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli. I am so excited for this third installment in the Simon vs. Universe. I just, I really love Leah and I really want a story from her perspective and I'm really excited for the bi rep because it me. Number four is Community Classes and Study Rooms, a book that you had to read for school that you enjoyed. Here's the thing with me, if I have to read it for school, I usually end up disliking it. I feel like many people have had this problem, but this is a book I read of my own accord, I actually listened to it. Why are you weed whacking while I'm making a video? Anyway, this book I read in my gap year between high school and university. I actually read it from the library, on discs, with a disc man, because this was back before you could get digital audiobooks. And then I ended up having to read it for first year university, so I guess it just worked out. Anyway, that book was Life of Pi. I just never had read anything like it before, and I think this might have been my first audiobook outside of childhood, so maybe that's why it stuck with me. I enjoyed it. Number five is Computers, a modern classic or a favorite sci-fi, and for this, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Yes, yes. I cannot wait for the third in this series to come out. I also can't wait for this weed whacker to go to hell. Number six is DVD Rentals, a book-to-movie adaptation that is coming out soon or has come out recently and you're very excited for, and how can I not say Love, Simon? This is a very big movie for the queer community. I really enjoyed it. If you haven't seen it yet, you should, assuming it is out where you live. I mostly say that because I know my friend Sajed does not get it in theaters until this week, so I'm very excited for his thoughts on it. Number seven is Library Book Sale, a book that you picked up on a whim and really enjoyed, and for me this will always be Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. This was a complete cover buy, and I absolutely adore this book. It was one of my favorite reads of 2017, and it's just so beautifully written. It's a great story about fandom and friendship. I just absolutely adore it. Number eight is Teen or Youth Room, a book you read as a kid that is a favorite or one that you want to read to your niece, nephews, your own kids, whatever your family situation is going to be in the future. For me, one of my favorite books from when I was like 12 years old was Remember Me by Christopher Pike. I used to have a literal drawer in my dresser filled with 
Christopher Pike novels. I was trash for Christopher Pike and I remember reading this and I think it was one of the first books that had like swearing in it and I felt so grown up. I haven't really read any Christopher Pike since I was about 17 so if they were actually trash I have no idea because it's been a very long time. Number nine is Museum Tickets, a book that made you feel more cultured upon completing it and this one I'm already laughing at my own pun because the book in question is I Contain Multitudes. This one's about microbes, microbes, culture, you know. Yes, I'm an absolute dork. Although I do like nonfiction, I don't read a lot of science books, but this was definitely a science book that was easy to get through, had a lot of really interesting information, and I felt smarter after reading it. I know that smarter and cultured aren't exactly the same thing, but they're they're close cousins. Number 10 is Overdrive or Hoopla, an audiobook that you loved, and for me, Welcome to Night Vale, a novel. I mean, literally anything that Cecil Baldwin reads. His grocery list, a flyer, I love it. Number 11 is Request a Purchase, a little known book that you want other people to know about, and for me, this is Elsewhere by Katherine Burns. This is a road trip novel with a queer protagonist in the midst of a mental health crisis, and I only know about it because I happened to meet the author while I was in Seattle for PodCon last December. So when she graciously offered me a copy of her book, I said, yes, please, thank you, I want that. Number 12 is Librarians, a character who likes helping others, and for me, the most recent one I can think of is Stevie from Truly Devious. She is just such a great character. She's always there when people need her. And although you can make an argument that she doesn't love helping others, she's definitely there to do it. And finally, number 13, Sanctuary, a book that is your safety net. For me, I will always feel better after reading a little bit of Sarah Anderson, so Big Mushy Happy Lump is definitely a book that will always make me giggle. Yes, we're cheating slightly because this is a comic book. I don't care. It's just so relatable to me and I love it to pieces. Like I said, I was very happy to be tagged by Jashana, one of the original creators. If you would like to do this tag, please do. I might also tag some people down below, but please do the thing. Also, if you do end up doing this tag, please either tweet it at me or let me know down in the comments below so I can go check it out because I would love to. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice for you. You can like and share this as you see fit and I will see you next time. Bye.